Hey everyone, welcome back. The build I want to show you today is the Primo 3. This comes as a frame kit. It's made by Gnarly FPV, and it's a lot like the original two and a half inch Primo. I already made a video about this one. You can check that out if you're interested, uh, but I really liked this one. So I was excited to try out the new three inch version. Um, so today I'll show you this kit, what I like and what I don't like about the kit, but the kit is really just kind of part of the story. Uh, because you get to choose the props and the motors and the flight controller and the batteries and that stuff uh, No matter what frame you're going to use that stuff is going to have a much bigger impact on how it flies And so that's kind of what I want to focus on for today's video uh, Now for me personally when I am starting a new build I usually try to think about how is it going to be different than my other builds I've got tons of different drones and I don't need a lot of redundant drones and trying new things is always interesting for me There's usually uh, you know some problem solving uh, to do and some lessons learned along the way and this is certainly no exception um, <clears throat> For this one I tried to go a little bit lighter than my other three inch builds by using 1103 motors and see how good that could be um, And the most surprising thing about this whole build is actually the props. Uh, I want to thank my friend Cliff he gave me a set of these props to try out and uh, I was really surprised by these props. It's the Gemfan uh, Hurricane 3016 prop and that's a lower pitch than I usually fly, uh, but it's got three blades, it's super light and even these small 1103 motors uh, can manage it surprisingly well. Um, so it's super smooth, lots of throttle resolution and, and still really fast. And so this build uh, turned into something actually kind of interesting. Um, I do get myself into trouble with this build, however, I'll tell you about that in a little bit and I'll show you some flight footage. When you want to get off the darkest ground The gravity pulls you straight down Earth from a bird's eye view You should grow feathers and see this too Here is the build up close. You can see what that looks like. It's got a pretty cool look to it. And you can see it's got these 8000 kV 1103 beta FPV motors and the Jimfan 3016 props. Um, I want to talk about the combination of motors and props because that's going to have a bigger impact on how your drone flies than pretty much anything else. This setup is not actually my favorite, uh, but it is working out pretty well and it is quite efficient. When I fly fast freestyle, like you just saw with one of these 450 million power 2S batteries, I get about three minutes of that kind of flying. And if I just cruise around gently and take in the scenery, then I can fly these for as much as seven minutes. Like I said, I decided to put 1103s on this build specifically to make it lighter and to make it different from the other builds that I already have. So for reference, this is my Speed Racer Twig. You can check out my other videos on this one if you haven't already. Um, but with this build, I did a lot of testing of different motors and props, and the one that I liked the best in the end was the 1105 5000 kV motor running on 3S with these HQ 3x3x3 props. Uh, this is a pretty aggressive prop, but it's got tons of grip in the corners, and that's what I like about it. And I still really like this setup. So the trick going to a smaller motor was going to be finding the right prop. 
The first prop that I tried was the HQ 3x2. This is the same kind that comes in the kit, only I used these blue ones because it looked super cool on here with the blue canopy and the blue props. It flew okay with this prop on 2S. Uh, it was fast and it seemed to have enough thrust, uh, but I just didn't love the way that it felt. Uh, the throttle response was a little weird and I don't know, it's hard to describe, but I felt like uh, the motor was just struggling to manage this prop in the way that it needs. Not not struggling to spin the prop fast, but struggling to adjust the speed of the prop uh, with the correct timing to make all of the adjustments as necessary. And of course, you know where this is going. The last prop that I tried was these. This is the GemFan 3016 prop. And I was just really surprised by this prop. Uh, it just goes to show how much a prop can transform the behavior of a drone. And that's what happened here. This prop has a very gentle pitch uh, compared to those others, and it's also a really light prop. And those things combine to help a motor of this size really master the prop in the air. Um, and that's the feeling that I get. Uh, it's very, very responsive, nice smooth throttle resolution uh, through the range, and it's still very fast uh, and very efficient. So this prop is really pretty amazing. If you've got a light enough three inch build, uh, it's worth checking out. Now the version of the prop that I have has a two millimeter hole in the center, and that's because it's designed for different motors uh, that Kebab FPV sells. Uh, he actually got GemFan to make this prop, which is cool. Um, but I've got a 1.5 millimeter shaft on these motors, so this prop is only held on by the prop screws, but that actually works just fine. I did find out though that you can get this prop now with a 1.5 millimeter shaft. So you might want to double check that you're getting the one that works with your motors. Now, when I talk about one prop, being a lighter or heavier prop for the motor, I'm actually talking about more than just the mass. If you put this on the scale, you can see this one's like 0 0.94, 0 0.95, and this one is 1.17. And so the three blade is heavier as you would expect. Um, so in terms of just the weight of the quad, the three blade is heavier, but it's got a shallower pitch and the mass that it has is closer to the center. This one actually stays pretty thick all the way out to the tip. And the tip is spinning much faster than the part at the hub. So in terms of rotational inertia, I feel like this one actually has a disproportionate amount because so much of the weight is out here. You can also feel the difference in your hand. This is a much stiffer prop and this one is much more springy on the end. You would think that the thinner material would make this prop less durable, uh, but because the quad is so light and because the material is kind of springy, it doesn't usually kink on the prop. And I've actually been flying this same set of props ever since I put them on here. Um, I've got a few tips that are like maybe a little bit damaged, but uh, I'm actually really surprised by that. Of course, there are advantages that this stiffer prop is gonna have under a lot of load, and that's with a heavier quad and a higher RPMs, it's gonna deflect a little bit less like this. So that's gonna give you better performance at the really high end. But the flex isn't much of an issue if the build is light enough, and so this one can work out as well. Okay, but like I said, this motor prop combo is not actually my favorite, in spite of the amazing properties of this prop. And that comes down to personal preference. Um, this prop can spin really fast and the total flying speed is still really high, uh, but the shallow pitch does require more throttle uh, to dig into the turns or to pull out of dives, and uh, that keeps messing me up. I find that I've got too much speed to manage and I don't have the bite on the air to make those last minute corrections. And when I fly, I like to fly close to objects. I fly kind of a racer style, even when I'm just out freestyling and having fun. And so for me, the amount of grip that a prop like this gets on the air um, gives me the confidence to fly uh, better. I fly this one and crash a lot less than this one in the same size flying space, even though it's heavier and flying this on 3S, uh, just because it's got so much traction in the air. And so for my personal preference, uh, I like that. I mentioned this one gets me in trouble sometimes. Uh, sometimes I'll be pulling out of a dive, diving through a gap in the trees and then pulling out underneath or something and, and end up giving it just too little too late and end up in the grass. So between the two, I think I still prefer this motor prop setup, uh, but I think you could make this one a little bit better. Uh, you could have a little bit more pitch on the prop. I've heard that they're making a 3018 prop, so that might be just the thing that it needs. You could make it lighter, or you could up the voltage to 3S. On 3S, this thing has tons of bite. It's ridiculously fast, um, but I don't really like this with the weight of a 450 million power 3S battery. And I've tried it with one of these 300s. Um, I don't recommend all of the Beta FPV batteries, but I do recommend this one. It's a great battery, but it's too small uh, for this, and 8,000 kV is too high. Um, let me show you what happens if you punch out. It's totally awesome, uh, but it totally makes the battery cry. 
So I like 1105 quite a bit. Uh, that's the same powertrain that's on the Beta FPV HX115. If you're looking for a bind and fly, uh, this is an option. I later switched to 1204 motors. I know people are running 1303s or 1106. There's a lot of different ways you could go with it. You could even run this prop on those bigger motors. And I know some people do to get the efficiency and that super smooth feel. Um, and you could even run this prop on 1S. Uh, this is part of the Kebab FPV 3 inch 1S recipe. And I'm gonna be building up that soon. So it's surprising how versatile versatile this prop is and there's tons of options for how you might build a three inch drone if you've got your favorite recipe for motors and props i'd love to hear about it let's talk down in the comments below there's a lot more i could tell you about the primo 3 kit and how i built mine up uh, but this video is getting to be long enough so i think i'll put that stuff down in the video description for now i will just say that the build quality overall is really nice i really like uh, how this is put together it's a lot like the original primo uh, but you should know that in here it is a really cramped space it's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle fitting everything in there and so it's not necessarily the easiest thing to build and since the sides are open you've got to make sure that everything is really well secured so you should be aware of that if i was to raise one complaint against the design of this frame it would have to be this antenna mount back here you can see i'm using a micro axi that's a really nice antenna and it's obviously designed to fit right in there and so that's why i'm using it um, but I think this is too close to the rest of the electronics. My video on this build has not been great, and I think it'd be better if the antenna was higher or farther out the back, like under the props. The other thing is the antenna wire has to feed into here, and I had to wrap mine around like this and put the VTX in the back, and that means that there's kind of a weird pressure being put on the UFL connector. UFL connectors like to come off really easily, and so that's not good. You may need to uh, glue the connector or just cut and direct solder the antenna uh, to get around that. Dry weight is 56.6 grams, and with a 452S, 84.6. The weight does include this capacitor that I've got on the XT30 back here. I'll probably take this off because it adds at least a gram all by itself, and I do not think you need to add a capacitor if you're going to run a 12 amp board on 2S. So there you have it. That's my Primo 3. Uh, there's a ton of different ways you could go with this kit or with any 3 inch drone like this, um, and so I hope I've given you some good info. I've certainly had a ton of fun with this one and with my other micro drones uh, recently, <clears throat> in particular the HX100SC. Uh, this is the Beta FPV drone and I've shown this on a few videos before. I'm going to show it again because I've just really been having a lot of fun with this one in particular. It's so light and so agile um, and it's almost silent. This one is becoming one of my personal favorites and so I'm pretty excited about this. I was down in California visiting family over Christmas. Um, and I took this deep into the Redwood Forest Ravine and flew it in a place that was super terrifying, but also super awesome. And I'm going to show you that footage in a later video. Um, so be sure to stick around for that. If you like this kind of content, be sure to like and subscribe. That helps other people see the same content. And of course, if you decide you want to get any of these parts or any of the other things that I've mentioned in this video, um, all of those parts and builds are down in the video description, down in the text. Um, so you can check that out. The links are down in there and you can find out more information about that stuff. And if you've got any questions, let's talk about it down in the comments below. Um, sometimes I get busy, but usually I'm able to respond to those questions. Uh, so just let me know. We'll talk about it there. Thanks for watching. I'll see you around.